Hello everyone. Hope all of you are doing good. So today we will start with day 12. Okay, political theory, meaning and approaches. Let's see what are the constituents that you should be studying. Now, uh, so yes, uh, here first context being the discipline of political science, how it is a science, how it is an art, to what extent we should make it a science and not. Okay, Then the evolution of the discipline of political science and how political theory evolved with it. Okay, Nature of the discipline, then what is political theory and what is the nature of political theory, difference between a method uh, and an approach, then approaches to study of politics, philosophical, historical, contextual, legal, constitutional or institutional, modern approaches, scientific, behavioralism, then the issues of behavioralism, post-behavioralism, to what extent value neutrality and value pluralism of Isaiah Berlin. Okay? So these concepts have to be studied in detail. Now let's see how it has been growing. So I have asked a very uh, open-ended question. All right, This question is reading, identify the major contours of political theory in the era of globalization. So question is asking the contours means what are the boundaries, what are the areas, contours of political theory in the era of globalization, in the era of globalization. Now how do we firstly interpret this particular question? Okay, so it means to say, uh, so when I'm saying the contours, the borders, the areas, the scope of political theory in era of globalization. So first, the very traditional notion, okay, the very basic concept of political theory, how it has come about, okay. So we know that first the meaning of political theory, so it is a systematic explanation of a phenomenon, right systematic knowledge of a political phenomena. So first in this question we will be talking of the meaning of the concept of political theory. Okay, How it brings about clarification of various concepts, how it brings about hypothesis building Okay, and how it seeks to provide to us a path for the future. Now why they have asked this context in the era of globalization. So we have to make a link that in globalization there are certain things that are happening in across the world and these things are happening across certain dimensions and what are the dimensions in political science. Okay, So we can be talking of justice, we can be talking of the concept of state sovereignty, we can be talking of the themes of things like identity politics. All right. What is the changing nature of the state? Hana? So these are the events that are happening in globalization. And when we say contours of political theory in the era of globalization, we mean to show what? That yes, political theory always have to adapt with changing times. It has to adapt or it has actually grown very well in the time of crisis and provided us solutions for the future. So that is political theory which solves the problem of the mankind and it paves a path for the future. Now paving the path can obviously be uh, giving us more uh, values, also telling us uh, understanding various phenomena by scientific inquiry in whichever way possible. All right, But how the key themes within globalization, what are the key themes and how political theory will have to respond, evolve within this context is the demand of the question. Have you understood this? Okay. Now bringing in dimensions will become easy. So if we look at political theory in the era of globalization, so first we explain the meaning, then we are talking about the scope of political theory at any particular, how it solves crisis how it grows and how it gives us a path for the future. Okay? 
right now in the era of globalization so first we talk about what are the changes that globalization has brought what are changes in the world so what are the changes in the world so there is more connectivity that has happened okay right there is spread of economic networks there is more information communication linkages that are happening there is more spread of data that is happening okay right then uh, there is a huge spread of capital investment and other flows that are happening there we also see that in the era of globalization it is a more interconnected world it has become a more smaller world okay and how in this uh, things are progressing so first we talk of the changes in globalization now how political theory will adapt to these changes so first so we will have to be giving more opinions we have to bring in scholars so there is no rigidity on how this has to be answered okay i have brought in dimensions that i feel relevant so it's a very creative question okay now so first idea that i am talking about is the idea of justice the idea of justice so in the era of globalization where there can be inequalities that are pervading across societies which kind of justice will become more important okay so social justice will be the underlying theme and obviously state will have to in this context ensure this kind of circumstances so that those people who are what so because there is refugee crisis there is climate change okay environmental problems all these things so social justice encompassing all these issues will have to be brought forth by political theory and this we have already seen in the works of whom we have seen in the liberal egalitarian notion of john rawls theory so john rawls wrote what john rawls he spoke about what he spoke about the justice as fairness and he emphasized on how the difference principle has to be there now whether this justice is applicable in the or the difference principle is ap applicable in the global context or no okay this remains debated why because cosmopolitan scholars like thomas pogi okay they say that how equalities can be brought about so they say how the burden uh, or how responsibilities are there even on the developed nation states pertaining to the developing states okay and also a global resources on tax is a recommendation grt thomas pogi calls it global resource on tax okay how this should be introduced so that the challenges that are being faced by developing countries we can have justice at the even global level and he also criticizes rawls that rawls difference principle is not very applicable in this sense because rawls himself is not sure to what extent it can apply because rawls doesn't support it at the global level as such okay now so first contour of uh, political theory is the concept of justice the second contour that will be coming is the nature of state is the nature of state so what will be the nature of state so we see that liberals have always called the state as a neutral institutions okay and the marxists have called state as an instrument of exploitation as an instrument of exploitation okay now what will be the nature of state in this theory of globalization so state will be obviously that state will continue its redistributive function and state will be welfare state because of the divides that are existing in the world okay and these divides these conflicts whatever come into being it is very much sure that the mechanism of elections will be something that representatives will have to go through okay so there is penetration of democracy right across uh, the nation states even in the era of globalization so there is no question of statelessness or stateless society okay so however there is some sort of a synthesis 
so in certain states there will be more regulatory function okay like the developed states there will be more regulatory function state will adopt and in the developing countries there will be more redistributive function that state will adopt okay so nature of state will be somewhere nearly a synthesis rather than any kind of what either the neutral state or either the instrument of exploitation so it will not be both it will be more synthesis of both liberalism as well as marxism and the political theory will have to accommodate this changing nature of state in the era of globalization okay now sovereignty so what is the nature of sovereignty so when we talk of nature of sovereignty all right so already uh, the monistic theory of sovereignty has come under deep question okay and uh, uh, there is the austrian concept has been criticized by the pluralist because state uh, sovereignty uh, in this sense is what that it fulfills multiple interest and there are for that multiple associations and other things is what the pluralist have attack so monistic theory of sovereignty is remaining under question rather there is pluralism there is pluralism however because of era of globalization we know that certain groups will exercise more power and that remains true okay so how it is not that all groups exercise power in the same way what the neo pluralist have been saying this way we will be witnessing in the nature of sovereignty why because there are a lot of ethnic divides also that are happening in society right and state will have to overcome these kind of challenges so state will obviously what have to act like that uh, institution which will bring some set of stability harmony coexistence in society but there is possibility that there can be majoritarian tendencies even in the multiple state and minority rights may come under challenge okay so yes ethnic divides identity politics all this will be faced by the state as an institutions and it will have to reconcile these conflicting interests between different groups different this however there is possibility that majoritarianism can be there as well as minority rights are being so identity politics will be a predominant thing within which states will have to address the challenges so nature of sovereignty in this sense now if we look at the so this is the more uh, power based concept more political based concept on the economic front okay so economic front we see that there will be mixed idea okay which means state will be more open to attracting investment so there will be more competition among state for that matter right and in this sense that there is huge competition to attract investment flow and private enterprises state will also have to play a key role in regulation okay and uh, state sovereignty comes under challenge when other international institutions because of this competitive tendencies like imf world bank right they might exercise more power over the economic aspects of sovereignty in this sense okay so we talk about these tendencies so you you pick up the basic fundamental aspects of political theory and then debate it in the context of globalization then we can talk of the nature of federalism nature so we spoke about state sovereignty justice we can talk of the nature of federalism so there will be more what there will be more voices for local tendencies okay global versus local will also be there as a key theme and because of this ethnic differences there will be more challenges and more scope and more demands for what for decentralization tendencies decentralization tendencies amongst various groups because we also know that in the era of globalization there will be multiple 
MNCs and others which will be operating at the local level. Okay, they will be coordinating with local groups, NGOs, and other things. So yes, the demand for more decentralization will be there, so that the interest of groups at the local level has also come to be. Because of these, what backlash that will come because of ethnic challenges. All right. So no homogenization tendencies should be there, and that's why there will be backlash and demand for more decentralization. So all these things, political theory will have to address in the era of globalization, right? And this is how political theory has always grown. It has always solved the problems of mankind. All right. So you understood how an open-ended question also, how different dimensions can be taken, how we can bring in the theoretical inputs and answer it more creatively. So there is no one right answer for such kind of questions. Okay, it is how you reorient your uh, creativity. All right. So just to explore this dimension, I have given this particular question. So I'll quickly give you a recap of how I have attempted it. Fine. So yes, first we talk about what is political theory, how it offers a way for the future, and it remains relevant as it solves the problems before mankind. Then let's see that the very nature of political theory in the era of globalization remains contested. Why? Because we will not be able to state what will be the exact nature. So different scholars, different issues, there will be different responses. Fine. However, political theory will be based on various interfaces like the local conditions global condition national conditions all right and there will be this sort of an amalgamation between universal particular global local macro micro unity and difference order disorder and community and chaos so i have shown how debatable this whole idea of the contours of political theory is in the era of globalization then we talk about like uh, according to dialectics there will be more synthesis between marxism and liberalism all right and there will be more post modernist trends all right so how post modernism will become relevant because there will be not one way of justifying and looking at the world so first we talk of nature of justice social justice nature of state right so state may become weaker in some respects may become stronger but the libertarian say it will become minimal state on the other hand other says no it will perform the regulatory functions and distributive functions so positive liberals talk in this manner nature of sovereignty whether it will remain as sacrosanct as earlier remains questionable as pointed by the mo monistic theories right so sovereignty also will not be externally it will have to change its behavior because of institutions like world bank un and imf and others even the wto so the austenian theory of sovereignty will come under attack then internal sovereignty also of modern state will be replaced by more diffusion of what kind of power diffuse of sovereign power then the nature of globalization will be more uh, values like justice freedom equality will be important because identity politics will be a key theme in this regard and then yes there is the nature of federalism which will be seeking for more kind of democratization and decentralizing tendencies and practices to harmonize with the differences that will come with the era of globalization so understood how uh, creatively we have to answer such kind of questions okay now let's see the next question examine the importance of behavioral approach in political theory what led to its decline Beha so question is not on behavioralism like that it is the behavioral approach linkage with political theory so first we will be talking in this question of what is political theory okay how it is a search of uh, rational curiosity in the mindset and how it has adapted to various circumstances situations and periods okay now so political theory in its origin was political dominated by political philosophy but however only the studying of classics could not solve the problem of mankind and specifically in the 20th century 
the political science as a discipline came under crisis it was said that the political scientists are not able to offer solutions after the world war 2 of the immigration crisis refugee crisis decolonization and other things on the other hand other social sciences have been able to answer these problems in a more better way so what came under question political science as a discipline came under question and that's when political theory had brought in the scientific method so david eastern brought what kind of method he brought the behavioral approach which means the scientific approach of looking at politics so scientific approach in the political theory okay and he laid certain foundations to this scientific approach so he laid the intellectual foundation stones all right making it a pure science regularization systematization verification techniques quantification okay so he brought the intellectual foundation stones to this scientific approach however very soon it was realized that political science cannot be made a pure science and any value free analysis of human behavior is very difficult so there was criticism itself of behavioral method in political theory okay and even david eastern says that whatever these scholars are doing it is not relevant so there is a need for credo of relevance which means something some uh, theory which is more relevant to the problems okay so criticism came even the traditionalist even the marxist have criticized whom the scientific approach on what basis criticism came from the traditionalist from the marxist and even what because of this criticism even david eastern called for a change in the what methodology so it was said that we cannot do a complete scientification of the discipline so then there was a call for post behavioralism now before moving to this post behavioralism we will be talking of what are the factors which are problematic in behavioralism so we will talk about behavioralism okay behavioralism and the limitations so it made human beings what more robotic it did not understand the fundamental aspects of what are the problems okay right and completely uh, left on that aspect of life it could not uh, solve everything it wanted to solve everything by scientific method and concern for values had been undermined okay so these limitations within behavioralism david eastern called for the post behavioral method and this post behavioral method sought to synthesize things this is the structure of the question so we talk about first political theory then how political theory has grown in crisis period it has pro uh, provided for a future how it started as political theory emphasis has been political philosophy but this could not answer all the problems so came the scientific approach in 1960s largely emphasized in the okay because there have been a lot of crises which political scientists were not able to understand decode or address and to save this discipline all these changes came then we talk of what is behavioralism what are the limitations within behavioralism and then how post behavioralism came okay so i will quickly do a recap for you now so what is political theory what does john plemenard say that neither a fantasy okay or paradigm of prejudices nor an intellectual game it is one which actually solve the problem confronting man and his existence so how behavioral revolution brought modern political methodology and problems in traditional approach traditional approaches obviously emphasis on political philosophy and other things right then the significance because it emerged at a time when political science was witnessing crisis okay theory was also witnessing challenges so charles merriam chicago school provided for this kind of methodology 
then the eight intellectual foundation stones spoken by david easton then marxists criticize this behavioralism even the traditionalists criticize so what were the challenges that were highlighted by easton so he says it pursued fundamental uh, rather than applied knowledge okay and what is the special responsibility of intellectual and not paying attention to human actors and their choices so it was a non humane discipline it hampered communication okay not only with general public but also other disciplines so there is no interdisciplinary character and value concerns have not been completely neglected so that's why eastern again calls for a credo of relevance creative theory and action for theory building that came in the post behavioralism and how post behavioralism address these challenges so eventually end with political theory as a philosophy will always attempt to find out the truth in every situation and as a science will always reach to this truth so this way how this amalgamation at the end had to be brought about okay so this is how uh, political theory has to be done very important 110 mark up will be there from this particular theme also all right thank you so much all the best we'll meet tomorrow again